The latest release of Argo CD is out, version 2.8. Now this release contains some very prominent updates. The first and foremost is the plugin generator for application sets. In addition to that, there is now policy control on a per application set basis and a new framework for creating Kubernetes resources based on resource actions in Argo CD. Today, I will be demonstrating all three of these features. And as I go through these demos, I will point out improvements to the Argo CD UI that surface new information or make it easier to work with large numbers of resources. I'm Nicholas Mori, a developer advocate at Acuity, the enterprise Argo company created by the founders of the Argo project. Before I go any further into this video, I do want to call out our free GitOps and continuous delivery course that's down in the description below, where you can learn how to implement these practices in your organization. So the idea behind the plugin generator for application sets is that you can write a generator in any language you want and simply implement a basic HTTP endpoint expected by the application set controller to serve up the parameters returned by your generator. This means that you can essentially integrate application sets with any system you want by writing a simple web server that responds to this request and returns the parameters for use in application templating. The example I'll be going through today is provided by uh, the Argo project, and it can be found in the Argo project labs organization on GitHub. It's specifically the application set hello plugin repository under Argo project labs. Now, the plugin generator can be implemented as a sidecar or as a standalone deployment. The hello plugin provided by the Argo project as an example follows the standalone deployment model as it's the recommended route. So if we look at our hello plugin application here, we can see that it creates a basic deployment with a pod running here. And if we look at this config map, the hello plugin script config map, we can take a look at the code that is running our plugin. And it's a basic HTTP server implementation that really only implements one route, which is slash API v1 get params dot execute, which takes in input uh, dot parameters and that replies with a list of objects nested under output dot parameters here. In the case of the example plugin, it returns two instances of hello with two different keys, world and again. Now for the application set controller to access this plugin generator, it uses a config map. Now this config map provides the base URL for accessing the plugin generator, as well as a reference to a key in a secret for the token. So in the config map here, it puts a reference to a secret called application set hello plugin, and then the key token within that Kubernetes secret for it to authenticate to the plugin generator with. This config map is created in the Argo CD namespace so that the application set controller can access it. And subsequently the secret used or referenced in that config map is also in the Argo CD namespace. Now our web server here mounts in that token from the Kubernetes secret and then uses that to authenticate any requests to the plugin generator. So it checks if that bearer token is there, it matches the one that it's mounted from the Kubernetes secret before replying with any parameters. So let's demonstrate this. I've got an application set here called my plugin that references the config map that I showed earlier to pull the base URL and token for accessing the plugin generator. And then it uses the hello parameter returned by that plugin generator in the name of the applications it's going to create. So as we saw in the hello plugin script, it will return two instances of hello, which should result in two applications being created. If we go back to our application set and sync it, we can see that two applications are produced based on what's returned from the plugin generator. And if we go back to the logs for the plugin generator, we can see that a post request was made to that API endpoint uh, that I showed earlier, which is how the application set controller produced the two applications. The next feature I'm gonna demonstrate is the sync policy for application sets. So 
The idea here is that with application sets, you're dynamically creating applications. And sometimes the information returned from a generator can change unexpectedly, resulting in potentially your application getting deleted unintentionally. So prior to version 2.8, you could set the application's sync policy at the application set controller level, meaning globally for an Argo CD instance, you could set this policy. And the policies could be create only, meaning that it's only gonna create the applications without modifying or deleting them. It could be create update, so create an update but no delete. It could be create delete, so no updates allowed. Or sync, which allows for updating and deleting of. The feature added to version 2.8 is that you can now specify the sync policy on a per application set basis. So as long as you haven't explicitly set the policy parameter, you can do this by default. Otherwise, you need to enable the enable policy override flag to allow the per application set option. But what this means is that you can have two different application sets with different sync policies. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to add a sync policy to the application set I was using for demonstration earlier. So I'll go and I'll edit the my plugin application set. And under the spec, I'm going to add sync policy, applications, plural, sync, and then I'm gonna say create only. So this application set will no longer be able to update or delete applications if the parameters returned by the generators changes. So to demonstrate this, we're gonna to go to the hello plugin and update the plugin script. And I'm gonna remove one of the parameters returned from the plugin script, which without that sync policy set on the application set would normally result in one of the applications getting deleted. Instead, when I, uh, when I save the change to that script, and restart the deployment to run the updated version of that script and then go back to the application set and refresh it, we'll see that none of the applications end up getting deleted despite the change in the results for the plugin generator. Now, if I go in and change the sync policy to create and delete, we'll see that when I click save here, the application set controller will reconcile and delete one of the applications that was generated previously. We'll see now that we only have the from app set world and not the from app set again application. Now the next feature from Argo CD 2.8 that I wanna demonstrate is an improvement to the resource actions. Now, if you're not already familiar with resource actions, you actually just saw me use one earlier, which is this refresh button on application sets. Now, this is a custom action that I implemented by adding a Lua script to the Argo CD config map. So if we go to my Argo CD application here and look at the Argo CD config map, we'll see that I've added a resource.customizations.actions.api group argoproj.io and kind application set. And so this is a Lua script that will run when I hit the refresh button. And what it actually does is it updates an annotation on the application set with the current date timestamp, which triggers a, a reconciliation of the application set in the application set controller, which triggers the application set controller to reconcile the application that I run the refresh action on. The improvement in Argo CD 2.8 is that resource actions can now produce a list of new or modified resources. Now this is an alpha feature and the only currently supported operations are create and patch and patch is only supported for the source resource that you're running the action on. Now to demonstrate this feature, Argo CD now comes with a default action for cron jobs that allows you to create a one-off job based on that cron job. Now granted, this does go against GitOps principles in some respect and that you're using an imperative operation to create a new resource. But the better way to look at it is that the source and desired state is still managed declaratively and automatically reconciled. You are simply triggering an instance of this cron job ad hoc.
So to demonstrate this on the Hello World cron job, if I click the three dots here, you'll see a new button that says create job. Now this is even implemented with a custom icon for this action. So if I click create job here, it'll ask me if I'm sure I wanna execute the create job action. And if I click okay, it'll generate a job and it'll keep the uh, resource hierarchy showing that this job is a result of this cron job and then run it in the cluster. So the caveat here is that in order for the Argo CD service account to have permissions to create jobs in the cluster, I did have to create a cluster role and a cluster role binding granting the Argo CD server service account permission to do create actions on, on the jobs resource. Now that's it for the application set improvements. Next, I wanna demonstrate some of the changes to the UI. So if you go into a pod and look at the summary page, there's a new container state row that will, for each container within the pod, show its current status and surface any additional information about that. So we can see for the job I created off of the cron job, the hello container is terminated because it completed and that it exited with Xcode zero. Another example would be if we go to our hello plugin deployment, we can see that the container named main within the pod is running and that it's started and ready. And so that is its status and conditions. The next improvement to the UI is grouping of pods and resources when there are more than 15 to be displayed in the UI. So if we update our hello plugin deployment here to instead of one replica, run 20 of them. When I click save, you'll see that we get a pop-up indicating that because we're running more than 15 pods that we'll get a new view on the UI here. And you can see that the healthy pods and progressing pods based on their status are displayed separately. And if I click into the healthy pods, it'll now show them in a list separated by replica set. And so the same thing for the rest of the resources happened. The replica sets that don't contain any pods all got grouped together. The config maps and secrets got grouped together. Now, of course, if you don't want to use this UI view, you have the option to turn it off by clicking the element in the top left over here, and that will ungroup all of the resources. I'm personally a huge fan of this because if one pod is broken, I care about that more than the rest of the 20 healthy pods. So it makes sense to kind of group them based on their status because that's most likely what you're gonna be looking for. Outside of the features that I've demonstrated in this video so far, there are a number of other improvements uh, included in this release, including support for multiple RBAC CSV entries, additional health checks for a number of different resource types, and some performance related improvements like enabling gzip for UI assets by default and compression for Redis by default. I'll include a link to the Argo project blog post on the version 2.8 release candidate where you can take a look at some more of these features. If you want to go try out version 2.8 of Argo CD, check out the link for the Acuity platform in the description down below where you can sign up for a free trial and spin up a production ready version of Argo CD in under a couple of minutes. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in more Argo project related content, check out the Acuity YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.